Hello everyone, I'm Pinakin Chamu and our topic today is introduction to textiles and clothing. Let's get into it straight away. What are the learning outcomes from this presentation? This presentation will introduce you to some basic terms such as fiber, yarn and fabric. You will also be made aware of the numerous applications of textiles other than clothing. Some of these you may have never imagined. We will show you how textiles can offer livelihood to almost everyone, including yourself. In future, we plan to bring across a series of six more presentations covering textile testing. This will help you understand how to determine behavior and properties of textiles, a key factor in determining quality of textile products. Don't forget to subscribe and feel free to provide comments. Let's get into today's topic first. Textile fiber. A fiber is a material that can be spun into yarn or directly turned into fabric. Fibers have two origins, natural and man-made. Fibers like cotton and linen are of natural plant origin. Fibers like wool and silk are of natural animal origin. Fibers like polyester, nylon, acrylic, Kevlar, Nomex, viscose rayon or artificial silk are of man-made origin. These fibers are made from various chemicals or in case of viscose rayon, made from wood chips that are substantially modified or changed chemically during manufacture. Textile yarn. A yarn is a long, continuous length of fibers that remain locked in place. Fibers are turned into yarns using machines or by hand. Yarns are often subjected to further textile processes like knitting and weaving to turn them into fabrics. Yarns usually hold a certain amount of twist to hold them together and withstand further textile processing. Yarns meant for sewing and embroidery are called threads. Threads have a high level of twist to hold them together. During these high speed processes and also have lubricants in them to help pass easily through needle holes. Textile fabric. A fabric is a flexible material created using a network of yarns or by bonding textile fibers together. Fabrics are made by weaving or knitting or tufting or crocheting or felting methods using either machines or by hand. Non-woven fabrics are made by none of these methods. Instead, they are made by bonding fibers using machines. Woven fabrics are rigid. Think of the fabrics used in jeans or work coveralls or dress shirts. They are relatively expensive to produce. Knitted fabrics are stretchy and flexible. Think of the fabrics used in socks, t-shirts, and sweaters or jumpers. They are usually relatively inexpensive to produce. Non-woven fabrics are paper-like. Think of the fabrics used in kitchen wipes, diapers, and disposable hospital gowns. They are usually inexpensive to produce but require large-scale production. Uses of textiles. Have a look at this picture. It shows you the numerous uses to which textiles are put. Let's discuss some. Clothing or wearing apparel used to cover body for warmth, modesty, and or fashion form a major but not the only use of textiles. During the recent pandemic, healthcare workers and others acutely needed personal protective equipment such as surgical gowns, disposable gowns, and masks made from textiles. The medical profession regularly uses textiles as high-pressure bandages, sutures, stents, human tissue scaffolds, and adult diapers. In building and construction, textiles are used for road stabilization, reinforcement, tension roofs, and as awnings. In land and air transportation, textiles are used as seat covers, airbags, composite aircraft panels, and in parachutes. In agriculture, textiles are used as shed cloth, windshields, and flexible silos. 
smart textiles are engineered to respond to changes in their environment or external stimuli. Examples include clothing that changes its color according to the wearer's mood or external lighting, textiles that sense vital changes in patient's heart rate or breathing and alert medical staff and so on. The list goes on and on. Non-clothing applications of textiles are collectively referred to as technical textiles. What matters most in case of technical textiles is their properties or behavior. This behavior is specifically engineered to suit the particular application. It is for this reason that our future presentations will focus on textile testing that is used to assess properties of textiles. The global markets for clothing and technical textiles are each worth hundreds of billions of dollars and growing. As the awareness about the benefits of technical textiles grows, so is the demand over the next decade expected to grow. Arts, science, or commerce. Does the field of textiles and clothing fall in arts, science, or commerce? Think about the large chemical plants that produce fibers like polyester or the massive cotton fields of Texas or Punjab. This is science in action. Chemistry, chemical engineering, and agricultural sciences. Mechanical engineering drives the spindles that produce yarn and weaving machines making fabric. Chemistry is at work during dyeing, finishing, and printing of textiles. Now think about the arts present during generation of weaving or knitting patterns and use of color and silhouette in garment design. Arts at work. And when it comes to costing, marketing, or selling of textiles, rest assured, it's commerce at work. So it does not matter what background you have. So long as you have an interest, there's always a place for you to use your knowledge. Build what you currently lack and establish a place for yourself in the design, development, display, and distribution of textiles and clothing. Good luck. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'm looking forward to receiving your comments and feedback. Thank you for your attention. Most certainly appreciate that. Bye. Bye-bye.